Welcome everybody to another episode, we are back here on the Good Bit Podcast, my name is Chris and across the table from me, remotely on my phone on FaceTime is my good close personal friend Aaron D, Aaron Dockers back on the Good Bit, how are you my dear dear friend? I am absolutely fine. Absolutely fine? Not absolutely fine, do you know Any I mean? better fine. than fine? Uh, no, no, How can you be much better than fine in these days? Not these days. Uh, how are my levels for you? Can can you hear me? Am I all good? I think you're all good. Am I a bit loud? Uh, I don't know. Your levels on the thing are like much bigger than mine. That's, that's fine. That's always happens. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Forget it. We're all good. Um, so we're back now, ladies and gents. We've had a couple of weeks now back in business with the Good Bit Pod. Aaron, my dear friend, how's uh, how are you finding it being back? It's lovely. I'm enjoying being back. Uh, I'm enjoying listening back to myself. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't quite. I don't like listening to myself. Uh, but I'm enjoying podding. I'm enjoying watching movies, and I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying seeing you every week. Oh, that's the right answer. Thank you for saying that. I How appreciate you? that. Yes, I am back. Um, yeah, right, I so, can give or take it. <laughs> yeah, listen, uh, I've been podcasting all year, but I'm very happy to be back. It's just nice to have some movie chat back in my life. It was drastically missing. So the fact that it's now a weekly thing, I am, or maybe not a weekly thing, but as, as often as it can be. Listen, I it's am, weekly at the moment. Well, it's weekly at the moment. You're right. loving it. Well, last week you chatted about your new job venture because as actors, we have had our work kind of put on the shelf a little bit. So we've had to find other means to make a living. And uh, whilst I've been working from home since this summer, you have started this new job as a Hermes delivery driver. Mm. And I never ask you a week on, how was your work this week? Uh, it was fine. It was it was ramped up a wee bit. Oh, and t- please tell us. More parcels, more delivery stops. Uh, yes. Uh, 83 I did the other day. Mm, that's a big one. Which is a big one. Which is quite a lot for my wee car. Right, Just shove in. Yeah. Any any like um funny sized ones or do, do you know like the contents of any of the box? Uh, one that was sleep, uh shaped like a sledge, so it was a sledge. Okay. Uh, one that was. Uh, no, they're all just square, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you ever like shake them and like try to hear what's inside them, or you just no? One business? woman did tell me what it was once. She, I put it down. She was like, "Oh, wait a minute. Can you hear that? No, because there's mad hoovering going on right now, and it's just <laughs> deafening for me. I don't know. I can't, if you no, can't hear it, it's probably yeah, fine. The, the microphone you're using, I think, is quite um, it's quite sensitive to your voice, so I can only really hear your voice. Right. Okay. Well, if you can hear it in post. No, no, I can't hear it. I'm fine. Go go for a big listen right now. Okay. The fact you pointed out there's hoovering going on, maybe, but I can't, but it's not going to disrupt the, the call. Right, it's fine. If it, if it does, we'll <laughs> do it again. Um... <laughs> right, so someone <laughs> told you what the box was once. Oh, yeah, they said, um... oh, I've... I'm so excited. It's my son's dinosaur costume. <laughs> And I was like, wow, I am really bringing joy to the world right now. That's, a, that's a, exactly One what you're lady, doing. my last delivery that I did on my last shift, it was my last parcel. And it was from Aldi. And I put it down. And she sort of said, is that it? And I was like, that is it. Uh, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, well, I ordered two things from Aldi. So... There should be two. I was like, well, as if that's your uh, fault. Sorry, not in my not in my delivery. Um, that's that's all I've got for you. See you later. She was like, "Well, I'll have to call. I'll have to I'll have to find out what's going wrong here." I was like, well, t- "Yep, bye." What do you want me to do about that? Yeah, I kind of like the sort of you know that you've you've done all you can. You so you have to just go. Well, I'm sorry. That's that's not my fault. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Whereas See you later, if, you, if you're working in a shop or something and someone's like, listen, I've got a problem, you kind of have to go, oh, what is your problem? Yeah. But this job, you just go, that is your problem. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. That sounds fun. Do you do you feel stressed the fact that you have like a target to reach? Like, say you've got 83 parcels. Like, you have to get them all delivered or oh. what happens? Listen, I had this twice happen and I've only now discovered recently that it was this thing. So there's a big list of addresses Mm-hmm. on your phone and these are the addresses of the parcels so you see the address you go into your boot and you find right where's my address get the parcel that has the address on it deliver it 
Yeah. Get it? And so there's an address, 51 Mc something Avenue or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, couldn't find it in my car anywhere. I was stressing like hell. I was sweating. I was like, I've lost a parcel. It's fallen out. It's um, I've lost it. It's Go fallen out right. somewhere. I phoned my manager. I was like, I'm sorry. I'm going to get fired. What have I done? She was like, oh, it should be fine. Uh, talk to me about it on Monday or something like that. And then the other day it happened again. And I was like, I can't find this parcel. What's happening? Wow. So at the end of my shift, I was like, I actually took my device, my phone to my manager. And I was like, can you, I, I can't find this address. It's not in my car. Have I dropped it twice? <laughs> Different addresses I can't find. And she was like, oh, no. You see, it says collection. Oh. So you collect that parcel. So it's a, it's a return. Oh, so I you see. don't have so it in you your car. You have to go to the person's house and just and say, get it off them. Yeah. Right. So there was they two. should have told you that before you started. They seriously should have. <laughs> because <laughs> they didn't. And I can't, I don't, it was just a wee, on every delivery it says D-E-L, Dell. Right. And then in the corner. And I guess this one said C-E-O, C-O-L. Call. Call. And uh, of course, delivery collection. Right. But I, I had more stress than I've ever had since March. I imagine. Um, it, uh, for nothing. It was just a collection. Uh, but they well, didn't tell me. Go. Now so I know. What do you do now for a, for a collection thing? Do you go to the one say Hermes collection? Well, I, 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 I did the one collection and I said, I just rung the doorbell and she knew exactly what was up. She was like, collect a parcel. I was like, that's me. <laughs> I saw you here the other day. You 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 didn't come and collect it. I was like, oh, I didn't know I had to. I thought I lost your parcel. I thought I'd lost it, but you've got it. <laughs> what, you found it for me. Is that I what they say? Did they go collect the parcel, or collect did they go up. Aaron Dawkins of the good bit? <laughs> I should actually promote this. I am Absolutely. coming into contact 83 with, households. with every households. every household in Perth. So maybe I should flog it. I should. Get well, what if I, what if I get you? Um, Leaflets printed, cards or something. If it wasn't COVID time, maybe, or I could, or I could stick just a wee card, a wee letter onto all the parcels. <laughs> Instead of getting them made, what we could do is just get a bit of A4 paper, cut them into little individual pieces, but and write on it by hand. The good bit, and then the, the URL, bit, and slip it into the parcel you're delivering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if you're collecting something, you just make an exchange. <laughs> you want to take this and for <laughs> swapsies? I'll give you this little bit of paper. For that whole box. <laughs> it's not like they're not getting the money back. <laughs> exactly. Give me a parcel exactly. back. What have you yeah, been doing? Well, that's good though. That's What have I been doing? Yeah, you. Uh, nothing really. Listen, I work with lots of schools. And the way the world is right now, listen, we're a couple of weeks delayed here with the podcast in terms of we're doing this in advance. So who knows what the school situation will be when this episode goes out. However, right now, we're still full on lockdown with schools being working from home and teaching from home and all that stuff. Learning from home is what I was looking for there. So um, lots and lots of shifts are being cancelled, losing lots of work, mm. and I'm just I'm just going through it. But it's fine because um, I've been able to work on something else, or I'm going to be working on something else this, this month, so it's not too bad. So uh, from around October to early December, right, I was making a video, a vlog, that is going, I'll try to be as vague as possible here, a vlog of a university campus, given a tour of a campus that we can send out to young people who aren't able to actually visit the campus in person because of COVID. Right. So instead of being there in person, they get to watch the video. And my instructions were: you do the, you mean you do lots of vlogs and stuff. You've got experience in this sort of area. You'll be the perfect man for the job. Do it, edit it, send it to us. Keep track of your hours, whatever. Right. So I've done that. It was great. Um, had to go back and forth doing f- fixing me bits here and there. My boss gave me instructions and things to say and all that stuff. So it was good. So I took up a lot of time. Are you funny? I mean, people have watched it and said it's funny, but they could just be saying that. It will be funny. I'm sure it is. There's funny bits in it, like um, like I'm walking down stairs at one point. I pretend to fall down the stairs and, and <laughs> silly things what? like that. You know what I mean? I didn't think it'd be that kind of humour. Like it's just ridiculous. But they, listen, they gave me the reins. Right. They went, yeah. Do what you want. Yeah. And yeah. Kind of like kind of like they gave Ryan Johnson the reins of. Of Star Wars, <laughs> they gave you the reins of this campus tour. They gave Ryan Johnson you, the reins of Star Wars to do whatever you want, and I was able to do the. You do, I, I you took a Ryan Johnson you approach. Want. You did yeah. silly comedy where it shouldn't have been. Well, Just listen, like Ryan Johnson didn't do silly comedy where it shouldn't have been. He did. He did. I'm afraid he did. 
Okay, well, well let's let's move on swiftly now to our movie of chat today. Actually. Yeah, a movie a movie of discussion today, which is going to be we're now in episode three of the Good Bit, and we're doing Star Wars eight. Don't ask me why it was Aaron's choice. Um, well, for the I first mean, time in, in Good Bit history, uh, after the past number of weeks, I have notes. Now, b- before we do, now, now take a good listen. Can you hear a Hoover? No. Right. Well, fine. Fine. It's great. <laughs> Can you hear the Hoover? I. It's in my. It's in my brain. I feel like I can't. He's going to say it's in my room. Is it? It's in my room. I'm Hoovering. <laughs> no. <laughs> is someone going to come in the, the room you're in with a Hoover? I hope so. Get her on the show. No. No, absolutely not. Okay. Who fine. Is it? Is it Mama Rana? I don't know. <laughs> they started when I... Uh, uh, they've just recently started. Okay. Well, if Anna's about to let it come say hi. I will. Um, if you, your, your job is to... It's, if you can hear it, let me know. I can, but maybe I'm willing to post in this a bit of disaster, but right now I can't. God. All right, we'll be fine. Yeah, we'll be fine. Right, so uh, this was Aaron's choice, can you believe it or not, um, to talk about Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. Um, directed by Ryan Johnson, because last week we chatted about Ryan Johnson's Knives Out. We both thoroughly enjoyed that film. Oh, yeah. Um, the the burning thing with The Last Jedi is that it's one of the most controversial films, and it's it's a highly debated Star Wars film, of course. But listen, Star Wars fans, I am one of them. Aaron is another one. We are passionate about Star Wars, and we have strong opinions about the certain films and that sort of thing, and we have favourites. And what I think will make this particular episode dynamic is that the Last Jedi is one of my favourite Star Wars films. And Aaron, before this episode, I, I've not spoke to him yet, as you know, uh, this was one of his least favourite Star Wars films. So this is going to be an interesting episode, hearing where you are at now with it, where I am at with it now, and um, how we found it on this on this watch. So, because I've watched this film a lot, The Last Jedi is one of those films I, I, like, I often have on. I just put on. In the oh, really? I've seen it a lot, and I realised that I probably wouldn't need to watch the whole thing again to do the show today. But I thought, no, it's, we're going to need to watch it. And there may be different developments, and I might have different opinions and that sort of thing. So, you know, on Disney+, Plus, when you look for the, the film you're going to watch, you can go to Extras, and mm-hmm. there's, like, deleted scenes and audio commentaries and that sort of thing. If you scroll right down to the bottom of the Extras of The Last Jedi, there is a John Williams score-only version of The Last Jedi. So, for this week, I watched The Last Jedi with no dialogue, no sound effects, and no special effects, audio-wise. Are you, the whole thing? The whole film, just the music. No, you didn't. Absolutely did. The whole thing. What so have that, you done that for? So, that's that's where we are today. Oh, well, you didn't hear any of the dialogue. Well, of course I've you heard know. Plenty of, I've heard plenty. Of, I had the subtitles on. What about... Was it good watching it with? It was different, and it was it was it was not even not even good different or bad different. It was like it Weird. changed the whole energy of the film. Moments where characters are screaming and arguing with each other, it's just this these violins and these trumpets and <laughs> drums, and oh man, what an experience! So strange. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, I just wanted to do something different, um, because. Uh, I know you'd be watching the whole film, so I'm I'm anxious to hear what you thought. But um, yeah, just what I've been wanting to watch that score thing for a long time, and I thought this is the time to do it. So I did. I hope that's okay. That's that's just fine. It's fine with me. You know the film. I know, I know the, the film. film. Yeah. So how many times have you seen it now? That was my third. Really? You only you didn't watch it again after going to the cinema twice. Why would you? <laughs> uh, I watched it. Yeah, twice in the cinema. Once because it's. I'm going to watch it. And then twice, because I was like, surely not. Come on, it's got to be good. And then I didn't watch it ever again. Um, But after watching Knives Out and really um, appreciating what Ryan Johnson in particular did with with his film Knives Out, I was interested to re-watch Last Jedi again to... uh, just I don't know. Just having understood Ryan Johnson's creative energy a bit more, and just wanted to see what what was different when I right when you were watching last year this time. Did you see some knives out things? Uh, on, uh, on, on, uh, no, honestly, no. Um, when uh, I think when you're watching a Star Wars film, something is 
huge as that, mm. I kind of forget about all film. Right. And I do, it's not it's not like you're watching a film. You're just watching a a thing. Star Wars is different for me anyway. Okay. Um, I find it hard to think about references in film until after the fact. Until it's like, oh, oh, did you know this scene was inspired by this in 1959 war movie? And it's just like, oh, right. that's interesting. But it's not at all what I'm thinking about when I'm watching Star Wars. What about Wars. when you're watching things like The Mandalorian and stuff? Do you have the same opinion? Yes, I, I don't. I can't see any references, even though they're maybe glaringly obvious, but it's Star yeah. Wars, so I just don't, I don't. That's interesting. Well, maybe that's, I'm not going to, listen, I'm not going to make any judgments on your opinion and that sort of thing, but Me maybe neither. that's like, maybe that's like why you've not fully appreciated this film before, because I've always said this is the most visually stunning Star Wars film, and it is the most beautiful in terms of the colours and, and the way it's made and stuff I, like that. I would, I would agree. Um. But maybe, but maybe, like I'm, I'm looking at that as like a film thing. Maybe because I've seen it more. I don't know. Um, no, and I'm not, I'm not focusing so much on the story. If you know what I mean. And listen, part of the also, the the reason I wanted to watch it again is, you know, it's not like I know I haven't seen it in its full glory since since when it first came out. But I have yep. seen obviously bits and pictures, and you're reminded of it all the time because it was such yeah. a big film, and not only in the Star Wars film, but in Hollywood and the world, and very controversial, and the critics loved it, a lot of the audience didn't like it, that sort right. of thing. It brought up a lot of things. But, and I, and I see these images, and I think, that is that is stunning. I, I, I want to watch that scene again. Um, and there are stunning scenes, yeah. and cool scenes in the movie, but my opinion is the same. The overall movie, I think, a as a Star Wars movie, it's it's misguided and bad. B as a, a standalone movie, honestly, and I felt the same way when I watched it the first time in the cinema, and I was astounded. I was bored. It's a boring film. Okay. Well, my next question was like, why do you not enjoy it as much? And is it because you're bored when you watching it? I was bored. I was bored. I was. I was bored. How Honestly. can you be bored? Well, how how can I mean? I, there's so much going on. I, I know, and I was really trying to analyze why. Mm. Uh, I think, you know, it's a long movie. Yeah. Not all long movies are boring, but yeah. it is a long movie, and I just think the the way the whole thing works um, just doesn't keep me very interested. Like, um, I said this when I first reviewed it. I think I first reviewed it on the good bit. Maybe, yeah. Oh, well, I think we talked about it in the top ten. Yeah, we did. Um, the first twenty minutes or so, I actually really like. Yeah, great opening scene. Great opening scene. Great opening twenty minutes. It's all going. It's all moving. Very, you know, whatever you whatever you want to take from this. It's very Empire Strikes Back. You know, it's the same premise. You know, the mm. the rebels, the resistance are on the run from the Empire slash First Order, and they are. It's they're they're striking back. They are right. they're winning in this movie, and I like that. Well, it might be a bit of a copy from the um, original trilogy's format, which I don't particularly love about the sequels. Mm. It's not new, whatever. Uh, you know, it's still the same ships and things as the original trilogy i just like come on something new um okay. whatever but i think um the first 20 minutes is, is a good it's a good way to start a movie it's the action is going you're straight into the action everything's moving you're 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 learning loads of stuff and obviously the anticipation from force awakens i remember at the time loved the first 20 minutes but after 20 minutes or so i just feel like the film starts to derail and uh go in a direction that just lends itself to being quite boring. Um, I'm trying to analyze why I thought it was boring because it's, I, I want to, I want to really nail down why I don't like this film mm. because it's hard because well, you, 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 I, the fact is, is I don't like the film. I watched it three times. Every time I watched it, I, I don't like it. <laughs> and then you try and find reason. You go, well, is it because, is it because I don't like Brian Johnson? Is it because I don't, you know, and I don't think it is because I don't like Ryan Johnson. I right. don't think it is because uh, it's not George Lucas. I don't think it is. It's because it's boring. 
because they put Ray, the main protagonist, mm. the interest of the whole series on a rock with a jaded Luke Skywalker for <laughs> the entire film. J- and again, they're trying to be Luke Skywalker on Dagobah with Yoda in Empire. It's that. She learns the ways of the Force. She has a master. She's the teacher. She's the apprentice. But it's not. It doesn't have the same energy. It really does feel like she is away from the action and not involved. And same with Luke Skywalker. For God's sake, the return of Luke Skywalker, they're just stuck on a rock the whole time. B, the adventure between with Rose and Finn, right? they go off to find the master codebreaker, is yeah. bollocks because, listen to me, uh, <laughs> it's my, this is my least favorite thing about the entire film when I first watched okay. it, and now I'm trying to figure out why it's so bad. They go to Canto Bight, the casino planet, yep. on an adventure to try, try and find the codebreaker. Fine, whatever. It's a cool planet. It's talking about... Casino. Casino. They're talking about war. They're talking about you know how they fund war. Whatever. That's cool. But the whole adventure, the, f- the fact that it's... I'm popping away to go get this thing so I can pop back to where the action actually is, that whole premise just lends itself you just it's just boring because you know they're gonna they're, they're going away from the main action to get this thing that they need to then save the day I, to me i don't know it just makes the whole adventure it, it's not moving forward because you know where they're gonna end up they're gonna end up back you okay. know where in empire strikes back when han leia and chewie are on their their adventure which is their equivalent it's not luke it's not the main Re- rebellion it's 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 them off on their side mission to try and get away from boba fett mm-hmm. you don't know where they're going they're they're on the run they're they're just trying to get away from, they're trying to fix the hyperdrive it's just like it's it's moving you don't know what's gonna happen whereas this adventure they're going somewhere to get something to go back to the main ship okay and it's boring okay I'm I'm gonna have to wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Now she's gone. She's gone in another room. Okay. The door's a magical thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, listen. All fair points, and I can't I can't be the one that's like this film isn't boring because I wasn't bored by it. You no, were. It's not it's, boring for you, and that's exactly. a fact. And exactly. I can't argue with that. Exactly. Um, oh, Anna's made me lunch. <laughs> that's alright. Right. Well, I'll have to I'll have to go eat it. <laughs> um. All right. We're back from a wee lunch break. How was the lunch? It was delicious. I am um, so did, sorry. What did I make you? Uh, I had uh, poached egg on toast with uh, some bacon and beans and kale. Oh my god! Yeah, it's brilliant. Very nice. <laughs> it's brilliant. I made a tea. Cheers. Is your mug a wee bit dirty on the no? inside? Oh yeah, a wee bit stained. Look. Oh, it's just a stain. It's fine. Yeah, it's a wee bit stained the tea after all these years. I've had this for years now. Ready? It's gonna be good audio. Ready? <laughs> right. <coughs> right. So, <laughs> um. I forgot where we were talking about TLG. Um, I'll just listen. You were talking about the uh, hyperspace maneuver and uh, the hyperspace and maneuver. They were, right. they were on There's board. Uh, you're right. I was talking about that. Listen, um, as I was saying, totally understand the critiques. And when I hear arguments about like the Last Jedi and that sort of thing about people not enjoying them and stuff, I don't totally dismiss it because I, I think a lot of people do have obviously the information to back up what they say and stuff. It's not just like, nope, don't like it, I'm ruling it out. Like, people do actually say, oh, it's because of this, it's because of this. I just didn't expect you to say it was boring. I don't know why. I mean, I just, I mean, I watched the whole film with no dialogue. For two I can't and a half believe hours you and, did that. And wasn't bored at all. But maybe, maybe. it's because I'm, I'm, I'm more biased towards these films, maybe. I don't know, but I just think it's, I just think it's a brilliant film. Um, I wrote down the things I liked. So I'll just go through them and you can, you can, Give me a thumbs up, or you can see what you think of them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about the opening with you know, like um, the the rebels and the resistance kind of being on top. Um, the relationship between Hux and Poe is really funny. They have that we kind of like phone chat. He's yeah, like, see, Can yeah. you hear me? I'm gonna go thumbs down on that moment. Uh, oh, really? Isn't it weird how our opinions are so completely meshed on the first six films? They're the same. 
We have the same opinion on every film, basically. We yeah. love Revenge of the Sith. One and two, we recognize aren't the best films, but we love them anyway. Love them anyway. Uh, the original trilogy, we'll love every single one, uh, especially Empire and the first one. Yeah. But the but you sequ- liked Force Awakens. I did. I did. But no, keep no, keep keep going through your list of keep moments. Going. List of moments. I'll... I like that bit. I like the bit with Rose's sister. And I didn't like it at first because we're thinking, right, she's a character introduced and then she just dies. That's not what this is. This is her sacrificing her life for the rebellion and that sort of thing. I think that's a great moment. I know. And, uh, it, and, and it gives Rose some form of purpose because she wants to honor her sister. I think that's good. No, love love the, yeah, love that bombing sequence. Uh, yeah, very really dark cool. as well, isn't it? She's yeah. trying to hit it with her foot and stuff. I thought it was really well done. I mean, those, and then, those, and then, those ships are, are terrible terrible design they're so yeah, slow because, and because it's going to explode yeah. and then when you drop the bombs you die <laughs> no that's <laughs> true but i loved that moment in the cinema because like the whole all the sound disappears and it did so in the score only version oh did it um, i think yeah well listen see when there's actual dialogue going on it's just silence it's silence it was like watching an old 1920s silent film and it was it was brilliant it was a great experience wow like the, the moments of them the really important moments, you don't really think about the score, really. I mean, I think a lot of people say, oh, the music's great. But I think in Star Wars especially, because the dialogue is so heavy and there's all these cool moments and stuff like that in any Star Wars film, the score is almost kind of put to the back of your mind a little bit because it's not the first thing you notice. You maybe notice it on second or third viewing, but definitely not first time you're trying to follow the story and you like the characters and stuff like that. But when there's no dialogue... And there's no spout, like the noises of the lightsabers and the blasters, things, nothing. No other sound. than Wow. No sounds. Other than... <laughs> there's a demonstration of... Hi, Anna. Interrupting yet again. <laughs> and I was just saying, I was gutted you never made me something. That was all. He's annoyed you didn't make him lunch. Oh, you should be here. It was great. I know. You know Listen, I would be if I was allowed. Enjoy. Thank you. I like a jumper. Very um, autumny. Autumnal Hi. is the word I was looking for there. Uh, yeah, so you don't really, when you watch a Star Wars film, you don't go, I'm just going to listen to the music. It was just, I don't know, it was just interesting, just hearing everything but the music. You I should really try it, even not watch the whole film, but just try the first little bit. I absolutely will, I will. Cool idea. And then I'll be segue into that then. I think Ray's theme might be my favourite Star Wars song. Mm, it's good. I like that music, yeah. Even better than Jewel of the Fates, even better than the opening title sequence, Vader's theme, Luke's theme, I don't know. There's something about it. it gives me chills every time. Yeah, it's good. It's a good. I don't piece. know why. The mu- I mean, the music in the in the film in the uh, sequels are is brilliant as well. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, maybe the reason I love this film so much as well is I just love the characters. Maybe I love the actors. I I think Adam Driver is absolutely unbelievable. He's my favorite thing about the entire sequel trilogy. He, you're right. Yeah. He. I love Adam Driver. I love Daisy brilliant. Ridley. I love. I love everybody. He he. Oh yeah. He Kylo Ren is. I'm. When they talk about in the, when there's rumors about retconning the entire sequels and making it not canon, That's I not gonna it's probably not going to happen. But I I get a little bit excited when they talk about that. But then I think about Kylo Ren and I'm like, oh, but I hope he still is a thing. That moment they... in Rise of Skywalker where he has the thing with his dad and he's greeting and he goes, "Dad," and and Han goes, "I know." Brilliant. Yeah, he's... literally. Chills every time. He's so a sensational, sensational actor. Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just a weird style of acting that is just unlike anybody else, I think. The way and he delivers dialogue is is completely not how you'd read it off the page. Absolutely. It's really genius. I did a, uh, I did a scene for my showreel at, at, uh, down south from Girls, the HBO series. Yes, I did that with Leanne in HNC. Really? Yeah, me and Leanne did, because we were going to do Friends. Yeah. <laughs> And then we had we couldn't do friends, so we had to learn girls in, in a night, and we done it the, the next day. It was it was great. Well, we, it was a scene where I think I can't remember actually what's happening in the scene. She's pregnant, maybe. Um, but yeah, I loved the scene. I loved Anna Dry's performance, and I was like, I love this scene. I'm going to do it. And then when I was reading the dialogue, I was like, I really made it aware. Like it's incredibly instinctive and brilliant what he does with um, text. Mm-hmm. Um, especially reading text that he has delivered and just comparing it's yep. just yes he's have you seen Marriage Story yes 
brilliant in that as well. He is he's one of my favorite actors working today. I'm going to say, yeah, absolutely, no, genuinely love him. Lots of knives out moments, um, and Kyle Ren scenes. Lots of cameras really going right up to his face, yeah, and then not moving, and the camera just goes whoo, like over to the side, and he's like a different. He's like looking at something else. I just think filmmaking is is an incredible thing in Star Wars, and it can be it can be chucked around a lot. You know, you see what's the guy's name who did Empire. Arvin mm-hmm. Kirchner. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. The you know, director. His director. His style is so different to George Lucas's style. Mm. You know, J.J. Abrams, Ryan Johnson, it's still Star Wars, but they have these wee quirks, you know, which I think is which is good. And maybe it's because I watched the stripped back version, but I noticed those a lot more this That's time. interesting, yeah. Yeah, especially after watching Knives Out. Um, one of my favorite moments of the whole film is when the when Kylo's had enough and he's he's in the elevator and he smashes his mask everywhere because Snoke is slagging him, <laughs> and he's like, "Prepare my ship," and they go in the ship and they go to try and they know where the rebels are and they're going to try and shoot them, and then he senses that his mum's there, mm. Leia's standing there, and there's this moment where it's like a weird fade crossover fade with eclipse and the camera shots between Kylo's face and Leia's face, and then it goes up to the, his hand. He's going to shoot the he's going to press the lever to shoot the gun and shoot the ship. And he just can't do it, and he moves. It. And it, like that moment there shows that, like you know, he's he's, he's, he's still either still good in him, they're still late in him, stuff like that. And just to be sort of moments like that, I think really helped the film big time. Can we talk about That's in that right. moment as well that Admiral Akbar died? Yeah, yeah. That was I. That was lost to me in my first two viewings, clearly because I was shooketh. Yeah. When they talk about that, all our leaders are dead. Admiral Akbar. I was like. <gasps> All our leaders are dead. <laughs> All our leaders are dead. I can't remember. But I was like, Dalek. <laughs> I was shook. And I thought, you know, yeah. it's hard to deal. I'll, I'll admit for these directors and writers, it's very hard to deal with these iconic characters. What do you do with them? You can't, right. you can't do anything right, really. But I thought in general, I think we needed more of stuff like that. People dying, just stuff think? happening. If Finn, yeah. sorry to jump ahead, but if Finn had actually sacrificed himself at the end there with the big cannon, I don't know. I thought it would be, that would make his character mean so much more if okay. they, he really saved them in that moment. Yeah, uh, fair point. Yeah, but um, what about point. Kylo and Ray connecting through the Force? I didn't like it in my first two viewings when it came out and I just, I, I, I was okay with it. I thought it was cool. I just think he's brilliant. She's good too, but he, he's, he made, he made those moments really interesting. She's better than good. I think she's brilliant too. She, she's so subtle. It's ridiculous. She's a good actress, but I don't, I, I just think Adam driver is, is something special. Absolutely. Um, I, I, uh, I just felt at the time, I'm I'm not sure how I feel now, that those moments were sort of a way of getting around the fact that Kylo and Ray had to have some sort of relationship, but they were miles away from each other. I just feel like it was a weird plot point. They were like, how can we make them... I don't know, I just took, it took me out a bit. I, I quite like how it shows that there's... Um, there can be like extensions in the Force, and there's like... The, the Force has progressed over time. You know what I mean? And like they're now able to do this. Um, and like... They're both so powerful. They're both connected in some way. She's got a bit of dark in her. You know, he's got a bit of light in him. It's like this nice wee crossover. But I get that. I get people thinking that they're clutching the straws. But I think it's a nice moment. Like, would, would that would the film be the same without it? Don't know. But I think it's a nice moment to have them interact because, you know, it ends up being the reason why she ends up, you know, on the escape pod to go and see him at the actual ship because she knows she's able to have some form of effect on him where well, they could okay. potentially attack Snoke together or whatever. They're kind of in love, aren't they? They're kind of in love, but not, not explicitly. No, but I like that. I like, I like that too. You know the I, way when you when here's here's an example in a film when there's two married couples and they both realise that they're married to the wrong people and they're actually in love with each other, but they can't do anything about it. They have to sort of see it from the outside. It's kind of like that, just exactly without, right. like, without like the couple aspect. And what I did find very interesting, as as in uh, in lockdown, I've I've my sort of the way I've dealt with it has been to get <laughs> big into Star Wars in a way that I never once was. I've always loved it, but now, oh, right. I'm into it, especially with the new stuff, Mandalorian. But I thought 
it, as a Star Wars nerd now, more than ever, I was really interested when Snoke said, he said something like when they were both together, when she came to the throne room, he said something about, of course, we knew the light would rise when, when, when you were becoming stronger with the dark side. We knew something else would come because of the force. That's how the force works. It's all about balance. When Anakin becomes a Sith Lord and wipes out all the Jedi and becomes, and it becomes um, Darth Vader and Palpatine ruling the galaxy, the force balances out with Luke and Leia. Like, mm-hmm. that's how the force works. And I thought that was really interesting that they addressed that in the film by yeah. saying Kylo Ren is strong with the dark side. And because of that, Rey has come. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was cool. Good, good um, thinking ahead and trying to tie up all the sense that obviously people complain about how there's not things tied up especially in the, in the next film but um i like things like that like we details that you might miss for a couple of times mm, yeah i love the scene where uh she's training on the island herself and she picks up the lightsaber and she starts kind of doing things and then like she knocks the boulder over the thing and it falls down and hits the crate of the the work people i thought that was really funny but then the scene where she starts to embrace the dark side a little bit and she goes into that pit a bit like luke and empire where he goes yeah. in and kind of sees that side and I just thought it was filmmaking at its best right here because it's the bit where she's all the energies, you know, going out of the room and stuff of the cave essentially. And uh, when she sees multiple versions of herself, you know, and it's like the click thing, I just thought that was right. I mean, what a great experience in the cinema for that. Um, yeah. But I'll tell you something that was weird not having the clicks audio for yeah, this. Just nothing. So it, was just, it was just a weird kind of sound, like a bit of music playing and uh, no other sound effect, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I like that moment too. I think she's brilliant in that bit. She kind of realizes that um, she wanted to go towards the dark, and I just think that's really interesting too. Uh, what about Yoda showing up? Nice wee, nice wee call back. Yes. The uh, greatest teacher failure is. Great quote. Yeah. I didn't... I, he didn't really say very much. I thought I remembered him coming back, obviously, and then watching it again, I was like, oh, I th- I'm sure he, I'm disappointed he didn't enlighten us even more. I don't know. Right, okay. I just feel like having Yoda back, he would have had something more to say about the whole thing, but all he said yeah, was... Probably, it probably was back longer, we just don't see it, though. He's, books he's sent not to important. Loot. What? The books are not important. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I love the moment of Kylo, Ka- Kylo, Kylo, and Rey fighting together. Against the those... moment where he, t- he turns the lightsaber and he kills his true enemy. Australian, so true. much fun. I thought, I thought it was cool. I think it's cool that they had this. A lot of people hate the fact that they just killed off Snoke. I thought right. that's. I think that's cool. Why not subvert ex- expectations? Why not just absolutely? Ab- why not just fucking chop him in half because he's tricked? Because <laughs> Kylo. Why not? That's cool, but. The problem is, with this whole film and this whole trilogy, really, for me, is that there was no plan. Mm. How can you, can you, that is the thing, really, that I always come back to when I go, well, that's a cool moment. I do like that, but I can't get over, and I will never like the sequel trilogy because of this. There was no plan. What the hell? You, you, you make a, a start any sort of trilogy, but a Star Wars trilogy of three films that need to be woven together into a one body of work, a trilogy, to round off the whole Skywalker saga, and you don't have a plan? Like, I, do, you think they, do you think they had a plan to the point where it was like, J.J. Abrams had a plan, then we had the new director, Ryan Johnson, Ryan Johnson has a plan, then they got all this negative feedback, so let's just put J.J. Abrams in charge again, and then they go back to the original plan, but it used to be different now. Yeah. Do you think that was the issue? Uh, well, yeah. JJ stayed the director the whole time. Yes, it probably would have been better. Okay. Well, it would have, well I don't... Well, I mean, JJ's have, executive producer on Last Jedi. It would have been probably more... would have made a bit more sense. Because um, the problem now is, um, now that we know that Snoke was just a clone... A weird force set. It didn't really. He meant nothing, really. He was nothing. It was all Palpatine. Um, I don't know. That just for me. That now makes the Force Awakens a bit. I don't know. When you see him, you're like, well, 
this is just a clone. Right. I just think it's it clearly wasn't thought out and it, it doesn't work together. Whereas it work. Doesn't work for me. Uh if they had a plan, whereas maybe Snoke was more than just a clone and he did just get killed and now Kylo really is only I think that was cool, but I just think well, I don't know, I don't no plan. Then we have the Battle of Crete, which I think is brilliant the way they've done this with like the 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 salt and the red flooring and the oh yeah and kylo going mental and then the the crystal critters trying to escape and ray coming back to lift some rocks and then luke comes through the force and stuff and it's just everybody's just is there um blow that piece beautiful. of junk out of the sky out of the sky oh god and then uh Hux, Hux goes do you think you got him brilliant um this whole sequence, Luke walking through the flames after being shot and just going like with the shoulder. Just brilliant. So funny. Um, Mark Hamill looks great here. Uh, I love the idea of him, you know, sacrificing himself to save the next era of Jedi. I think that's cool. I will always be, I will never be the last Jedi and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I love the scene where, where Poe and Ray introduce themselves for the first time. This wee sort of clip where uh, she says, I'm Ray, and he goes, I know just because he's heard so much about it and stuff. I just think that's brilliant too. There's loads of wee moments. I get what you're saying about how, you know, that uh, there might not be a plan or blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know. I think it's just one of those ones where if you're looking at it film to film, and I guess on this particular podcast, we're looking at The Last Jedi itself, right? There's loads and loads and loads of moments in the film that I love, right? And I think it looks stunning and I love the music and I love the performances and all that stuff. I would agree so with I feel that. like I, I, I put those, say again, I would agree with what you just said there. Right, okay. You should go with it because it's Star Wars. Yeah. Um, and I get what you're saying. I get the frustration of the three films maybe not tying up so well. Rise of Skywalker had problems for me like that. I feel like they shouldn't have gone back to any original plan or just tried to change anything. I feel like the last year that happened and some people like it, some people don't, and they just went with that and, and continue going forward. Maybe not yeah. have uh, Palpatine back. Maybe just be Kylo as the all-powerful guy. You know? Did you prefer The Last Jedi to Rise of Skywalker? Yeah, big time. Mm. Big time. Were Last you slightly Jedi for me? disappointed Sorry. with Rise of Skywalker in the end? No, I wouldn't say disappointed. I was happy that I liked the fact that they got lots of different characters and they kind of tied up all their individual stories. I thought that was very impressive. Yeah. Um, but there are, there are parts of Rise of Skywalker that I do think they, they may have um, changed my opinion on other parts of the sequel trilogy like you say. Um, Is it? Your least favorite of the sequel trilogy? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, it's may it may not even crack my top ten Star Wars films. Right, this guy. Well, mate, I don't know. I like the characters a lot. I, I need to watch it again. It's been a while since I've seen it, but um, yeah, I I love the Last Jedi because of all these moments that I'm talking about, and I just think it's it's beautiful and it's well acted and well written and all that stuff. But then it's like, um, you know, you make you make valid points and stuff, but it doesn't take away my enjoyment of the film, though. I don't think it's boring. You know, I think why not take these risks that they do? You know, maybe they could have been all, more. They could, they could I'm be all more for risk. I'm all for risks. Really, I am. Yeah. Um, and and the truth is, I I wanted and still do want to like it because yeah. it's Star Wars and it's awesome and there's space and lightsabers and yeah. yeah. But yeah, I just don't. Uh, and. The, the, yeah, the, the the thing, but I, I, I as a person, just unlike you, I can't see past the fact that there was no plan. And um, it just takes me out of it. Like when they're talking about who's Ray's parents. Right. And Kylo says, you know, they're nothing, no one. Um, uh, that was, he was telling the truth in that film because that was it. Yeah. I don't think Ryan, jo that was Ryan Johnson's answer. And then J.J. Abrams says no 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 i'm going to i'm going to wipe that clean and and change i'm going to make a change like right i i just think i just can't believe they didn't plan follow through with them ah uh, yeah um and had they I known am, uh... had they known from force awakens that she was going to be ray palpatine i mm. think they could have made way more references to that and made it really cool throughout the trilogy but they couldn't because they only decided um, I almost don't want to talk about it anymore. I feel like we should, that's a good way to kind of leave it. Um, I think it's interesting. Well, it's always been interesting talking to you about this film. Um, 
because we do have so differing opinions. And as you see, our film tastes in general tend to be quite similar. Yeah. Um, we have similar opinions on lots of things, but this one does divide us, and that's 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 great. That's what, that's what Star Wars is, though, because it, it means something different to everybody. Um, so I'm more than happy to chat about Star Wars whenever we want here on, on The Good Bit. So I hope you're all right with that going forward. I'm just looking through some films right now because it's my turn to pick next week's film. Oh, so it is. Um... I had one in mind, but I've realised I forgot to check Amazon. Well, it's what are you in the mood a... for? Um, something I haven't seen before. All right. Well, my first choice was the Truman Show. Okay. Have you seen that before? Yep. All right. We well, don't want to do that then. Uh, have you seen it? Yeah. It's one of my favourite films. Well, we could do it if it's available. Is it available? It's on Netflix. On Netflix, well, or we could do, or we could do, uh, let's see, there's also thinking in Glorious Bastards. What about the Terminator? I've not seen Terminator, it's not even two hours. Yeah, let's do that. Something different, all right. Okay, it's on Amazon Prime, right? Next week's film will be The Terminator 1984, nice and easy, one hour 40. Brilliant. Okay, that's next week's film, right here and now, on The Good Bit. Any last words for the listeners, or for... Listen, it's been heated. It's been passionate. It's, been heated. it's not necessarily been heated between us, mm. but between Star Wars and us, maybe it has. Um, I, I, I love you, Ryan Johnson. Uh, please, please hire me. Um, Daisy Ridley, I'd love to work with you. JJ uh, Abrams, again, love to work with you. Uh, I'm still here. Uh, I do love you deeply. This is sweet. Um, Lucasfilm, I love you deeply. We'd love to work with you. Um, anyone, really, would love to work with you. When is this Kenobi series happening? Uh, 2022. Okay, can't I'm wait. I'm buzzing for that. Uh, yeah, listen. I really, hope you do, I really hope you like it because we love you and McGregor's Obi-Wan. So I really hope you like it. I know I'm going to love it regardless, but I hope you do too. Uh, I, I, You might not love it regardless. <laughs> I think I'll probably love it regardless. Hello there. It's it's oh, oh okay. I'm gonna say it's not hard to please me, honestly, with Star Wars. I love it. So that's all I'll say. But I will say <laughs> I had a point to make. I'll just <laughs> just read it. No, listen, it's fine. We had to get this this chat off our chest. It's episode yes. three. Well, it's our third film, and it may be odd to do eight in episode three. But, yeah. listen, we had to get this chat off our chest. It's a movie that we will be talking about forevermore. Yeah. So we got it in week three. Yeah, we got it sort of ticked off the box already. All right, guys, thanks very much for listening. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you think on the socials. Twitter is at the Good Bit Pod, and so is Instagram. Follow us over there, and we will speak to you all sometime down the road, ladies and gents. Thanks for joining us. Take care of yourselves, and we will talk to you all next time. Yeah.